This video shows you how to start up the Leica DM6 wide field microscope and add a sample to an air or oil immersion objective. To the right of the microscope, switch on the power for the extension socket. And if using the system for fluorescence, switch on the wall plug labeled flash 4. Remove the microscope dust cover, fold and store on a spare stool or free benching. Switch on the CTR power box and then the fluorescence lamp. Turn on the power switch labelled 1 at the back first and then the shutter switch labelled 2 at the front. Whilst waiting for the microscope to boot, log into the PC. When the touch screen shows the home page, the system is booted. This displays the current in position objective and the contrast method. In this case, we have a 40 times dry lens in place, which is suitable for our sample. To add your sample to the stage with an air objective, on the touch screen, press the XYZ control the tab position and ensure the stage is at the lowest position as shown. If not, then hold the move to load button to bring the stage down. Carefully add your sample, cover slip upwards to one of the slide holder positions pulling the silver button spring clip back to let it lie flat and hold it firmly in place. This is easier to achieve to one side of the objective. On the Smart Move controller, switch to XY fast using the button on the left, then use the X and Y controls on the controller front to manoeuvre your sample under the objective. Now on the touch screen, press and hold the Move to Focus button to bring the sample up to the approximate focal plane. Choose bright field or fluorescence by pressing the contrast tab on the touch screen. Here we select fluo for fluorescence. The filter cube choices are shown below and are in wavelength increasing order of DAPI, FITSI, Psi 3, Texas Red and Psi 5. Here FITSI, leveled L5, is chosen. Open the shutter above to illuminate your sample and use the oculus to find your focal plane and sample with the focus knob and smart move controller. Once found, close the lamp shutter to protect your sample. Next, we show how to move to an oil immersion objective. On the touch screen, select the XYZ control tab and swap the controls to XY with the button in the top right. Using the save button in the bottom right, mark your current position and then move to the objective tab. Select an immersion oil lens, which are apparent from the oil drop in their icon. The chosen objective will flash, indicating you must change immersion. Move the stage to the side to gain access to your sample, and then using the applicator attached to the lid of the oil bottle, collect a small drop of oil on the end and carefully apply a drop to your cover slip. To move your sample back to the correct location, select the XYZ tab on the touch screen and press the reuse icon, adjacent to the save icon. The stage will move back to the saved location. Move back to the Objective tab and once more press the Oil Immersion Objective icon and the turret will move to that objective. Finally, using the Contrast tab, open the Illumination shutter to fine-tune your focus, remembering to close the lamp shutter when finished to prevent damaging your sample. Now we will go through the software on the Leica DM6. Log into the PC and into PPMS with your booking. Ensure all hardware is started, then double click the last X icon on the desktop. Ensure the configuration default dynamic wide field tree is selected with standard configuration, then click OK. It will ask if you wish to initialize the stand. This is important for any tile scans, so if using them say yes and it will register the stage position. After this, boot up takes about a minute or so. In LASX, we can load channels from a saved setting. 
or we can add them manually, or we can load them from a previous project. To add them manually, choose a pseudo colour for the channel, give it an appropriate name such as AF488 for Alexa488, and choose the appropriate green fluorescent cube. Right click on the channel to set in properties that I used. Click the plus icon to add a second channel and repeat the procedure for this channel. Notice it leaves a new channel on the same filter cube. So in this case, we would get a red pseudocolored image of green fluorescence. So select the correct filter cube for the channel you're on. The wavelengths of the filter cubes are shown on the wall to your left, or if you hover your mouse over the cubes, it will tell you the excitation and emission wavelengths. For each channel, we can set the exposure and lamp intensity. To do this, you need to manually or find your sample X, and your click clips. live, and it will open the fluorescent you can cube to, to the correct channel channels and use the touch screen. It will create a live image in Las X, but if you have the slider on the microscope pointing to the eyes, it will be a black image. Once you've found your sample in X, Y and Z, move the slider to direct the light back to the camera. If you're already live, you'll get an image. Otherwise, click live to start grabbing an image on the camera. You can see that the Hamamatsu Flash 4 is a large dynamic range camera, producing a 16-bit image. It isn't necessary to completely fill this range and the monitor struggles to display it all, so you use the lookup table sliders to adjust the minima and maxima of the viewer. This is easiest with the auto scale button and also using the range indicator lookup table which shows pixels at maxima in blue with the rest in the glow scale as shown in the lookup table. Notice that if you aren't set to the full dynamic range of the camera, it will show some pixels as apparently saturated but this is just at the range shown. Resetting the full range shows that these aren't saturated with the current imaging setup. Swapping to check the green channel by clicking on the channel that we created shows that for this sample it is a lot dimmer. Clicking auto scale shows us that the image is covering a range up to approximately 1200 gray scales from about 130, so we have approximately 1100 gray levels. This may be enough dynamic range for your experiment, but you can make it brighter. The Lamp Intensity Manager, FIM, is already at 100%, so we can increase the exposure. Going to 100 milliseconds gives us a range up to 1900 grayscales, which is enough for our needs. If you're happy with the settings for the two channels, you can now capture an image. If you press Single Image, it takes a snap of the currently selected channel. If you press Capture Image, it takes an image of all the channels and ignores any Z, Tile or T settings. If you press start, it takes all of the channels plus any Z, tiling or T settings you may have set up. As I'm doing this, the images are automatically stored in a temporary project. Images captured with the single image and capture image button are auto numbered as image N, and any images captured with the start button are numbered with the prefix series instead. You'll notice that since I had no extra dimensions set up, image 2 and series 3 are identical. If you wish to view the images without the range indicator, click the LUT button once and it shows each channel as a grayscale. Click it again and it shows the pseudocolors that you chose for each channel. Pressing the overlay button will show the captured images as a merge too. Double clicking on an image will fill the image window with that. So here we can look at the dual fluorescence image for example. Zoom in and out with the middle scroll wheel of the mouse or use the mouse buttons above the image. The Fit to Window button will toggle between Fit and 100%. You can choose to have specific file names using the project settings rather than the auto named series. Ticking Use Defined Image Names allows you to auto name them with a specific prefix. In this example, all subsequent images captured are called Fred, with auto numbering after the name. You'll notice that because I have reset the image lookup table, this new image is captured with the channel colouring as I defined it. The green doesn't appear visible, and this is because the channel is dim and the monitor can't display the full dynamic range of a 16-bit image. The data can be visualised by altering the lookup table, for example using the auto scale button. This doesn't affect the intensity values of the captured pixels, only the apparent display. If you wish to capture a Z-stack, activate Z by pressing the Z button. 
This brings up the settings window below the other settings. I'll minimize the other settings to make display easier. We can choose to capture Z-planes at the optimal Nyquist sampling using System Optimized, which takes into account the objective numerical aperture and the wavelength image to calculate the Z-plane frequency to allow enough overlap to accurately render the data in 3D. Alternatively, you can override this and define the Z-step size or a fixed number of Z-planes through the volume. We recommend using System Optimized for most work. The volume to image can be defined either by setting begin and end or by typing in the volume required. If you do the latter, for example setting 5 micrometers, it will set an upper and lower Z position around the current focal plane. This is shown graphically on the left with the current plane highlighted by the objective cartoon with the steps above and below shown. Above the window it shows that it has calculated that it requires 11 steps to perform this stack at system optimised which for this objective and wavelength is every 0.51 micrometers. If you don't know how thick your sample is or whether you're in the middle or not, we can set the top and bottom. Go live on a suitable channel and delete the current Z positions. Use the focus, move up away from your sample until it's just out of focus and click begin. Then move focus through the sample until just out of focus and click end. Click stop to prevent bleaching your sample. Now clicking start will perform an XYZ multi-channel stack. It has remembered the zoom I was using to check my focus. I can zoom back out with a fit to display button. You now have a slider on the right of the image window to move through the captured Z planes. If you want to repeat this in another field, you can find another field by eye or on the camera. Here I'm using the oculus by pressing live and then sliding the beam past to eyes with the slider. Once found, push the slider back to the camera and using the live image, adjust the focus to be as sharp as possible. Click recenter in the Z stack window to reset the central plane and press start to capture this Z stack. This works well on sections that are the same thickness throughout or on mono layers of cells. For variable thickness samples, resetting begin and end each time is better. Since the small structure in the centre was what I was interested in, I can swap to a higher powered objective. This is simple for another air lens, I just need to select it. Go live and tweak the focus back to sharp again and again recenter the Z stack. You'll notice the stack is the same total volume, but the number of steps is larger due to a higher numerical aperture objective. You'll also need to double check your exposure times when swapping lenses. The higher NA will capture light better, even though in this case the pixels are being quartered moving from a 20 to a 40x. Zooming out to the full field in the viewer window and using the range indicator for the whole dynamic range shows that I have saturation with those blue pixels. We can either reduce lamp intensity or exposure. Here I'll decrease exposure since lamp intensity is already at 55%. The green pixels shown in the empty space are below the range indicator settings. We also need to check the other channels. Here the green channel appears too bright, but it is because the lookup table has been cropped. Resetting the range and we can adjust the settings for a reasonable signal. Pressing start takes a stack. The odd colour of the image as it's captured is due to the two channels being overlaid using the range indicator lookup table and it hasn't yet captured the second channel so it's filled with zero values which are coloured green. We can reset these and inspect the image using our pseudo colours. There are other options for camera control. One is a colour balance tool. This is only required for colour cameras. For fluorescence our camera is monochrome so this isn't needed. However, there is slight vignetting on the camera and we can correct for this by setting up shading control. Clicking the shading button brings up the linked shading wizard. Tick the box to activate it and if, de if desired untick the automatically filled box for the live view. Then click the wizard tab. 
follow the instructions listed. Store your current position, then using the oculars move to an area with no staining and move the focus down so nothing is in the field and it is out of focus. Your exposure is already set to avoid saturation so this can be left alone. Remember to move the slider out to the camera once done. Now click the Acquire tab and choose Single Reference. This will run for the currently selected objective. Using Start will ask you to perform for all objectives. This is usually unnecessary. Pressing Close will finish the wizard without moving back to your stored position. Click the Restore tab to select moving back to your safe position on the sample. Link shading then needs activating for the camera. Next we will look at LASX Navigator. Clicking this button opens a new window. Using the mouse scroll wheel you can zoom out and the workspace shows the entire potential imaging area. The white square shows where we are. Going live activates the current channel. We can swap this to another channel with the channel controls at the top and can also edit the lookup table here too to make it easier to view. Once happy with these settings you can click spiral to create an overview image. Press stop once you've covered enough of the area to find your regions of interest. Here we'll draw a polygon around this section of interest. This creates the tiles necessary to capture this polygon. Double clicking in the centre of this moves the stage to that position. Clicking live lets us double check the focus. We can choose to capture the entire tiled area as a Z stack but for speed I'll switch it off. This can be done by deleting the Z settings or in image we can deselect Z so that it only captures a single plane. Now in our task list we have one tiled image tick to capture. Pressing start will perform this task. It is possible to set up multiple tasks across the sample and allow it to capture these. For tiled regions, we can stick them together once captured using Mosaic Merge. Select the tiled image from the project and click Merge, which creates a single merged image. Having the linked shading already set up gives us a nice flat image. Back in acquisition, we can instead, for example, capture multiple single images by drawing small rectangles around the regions of interest. Pan around the overview scan using the arrow tool to mark the positions. Now we have four positions activated and Start will capture these four positions for us. If you wanted these as Z stacks, then ensure the range covers your sample using begin and end as before. If the sample is flat, you can use the same stack for all images. If not, deselect this option and redefine the stack for each position. Here I'll do two fields for speed.
all data are stored in the project. When you close Navigator, the data are still stored in the project in LastX. When saving the images, you can remove any images within the project that aren't required. You can preview images within the project. Data captured in Navigator are stored in subfolders within the project. Unstitched tile scans are shown as a series, and if you select the whole project, it lists the individual images as a series for perusal too. Right click the project, choose Save As. There is a local hard drive labelled E with a user data folder in it and month folders inside that. Or you can save to your network storage folders if you have them mapped. Give the file a suitable name and press save. This saves a LIF file which stores all images in the project as one large file. This can be opened in Fiji, ImageJ, with bioformats or with LASX. The linked shading data doesn't need to be saved, although you can and reuse it but it's usually better to redo for each set of experiments. We recommend storing one leaf file per cover slip or, or section so that you can just name these and not name the individual images inside it. So we have covered 2D and 3D images and Navigator. There is an autofocus option, but it isn't required for fixed samples. There is another option to perform stage experiments, but it is the same as Navigator without the preview image. The settings used can be stored as a user setting using the save button, which means you can reload the settings in another session. This loads channels, exposure, lamp and Z settings. Alternatively, you can reuse from a saved image by loading the project, selecting an image and pressing apply. This won't add the Z settings if you use a 2D image, and vice versa. Once you have saved everything, you can close LASX. At this point, you can move the stage down and clean objectives if necessary, and then follow the shutdown procedure following. You can copy data across the network to any map drives you have and then sign out from the PC. This video shows you how to shut down the Leica DM6 wide field microscope and clean an oil immersion objective. To remove your sample from the stage, on the touch screen, press the XYZ control tab and select the Z control page. Press and hold the move to load button to bring the stage down to its lowest position. Remove your sample by pulling the silver button spring clip to release it. If you used an oil immersion lens, take a single piece of lens tissue from the box and fold it in half. Use this to carefully wipe once across the objective lens to remove excess oil. Using a fresh, clean piece of lens tissue, wet it with alcohol from the supplied dropper bottle and once again wipe the objective lens to remove any residual oil. Finally, take a clean, dry piece of lens tissue, fold it in half and wipe the lens to remove any alcohol residue. Lastly, wipe any spillages from the microscope stage. Now you can close down the software and hardware. Ensure all images are saved and LASX is closed. Switch off the fluorescence lamp by switch number 2 and then number 1 at the rear. Power off the microscope by switching off the CTR control box.
switch off the wall plug labeled flash 4. Shut down the PC and replace the dust cover on the microscope. Once the PC has finished shutting down, the extension socket power can be switched off. This is done using the grey power switch.